Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. As I alluded to at the end of my last segment, uh, I am happy to have had the opportunity to sit down and talk with uh, Debbie Gunn, who played Patsy Bremer in four episodes of The Waltons. Uh, we were lucky to reconnect as she did reach out to me via here in my comments on my YouTube page, as well as on Facebook, and even someone else sent me a little note saying that she was trying to reach me. So we were able to connect, and I was so happy to be able to schedule a time for us to sit down and chat. So please help me welcome Debbie Gunn. Welcome, Debbie. It's so great to have you. I'm so glad that you reached out to me. Uh, and and then actually a friend of yours also sent me a note saying, sent me a little a little letter saying that you were oh. trying to reach me. I was Is like, that Yay. I think that's from the Waltons Forum, right? I think uh, maybe. I, he... I don't know. So ah. Carrie. So there you go. Yeah. Carrie, my new friend on the forum, and we're gardeners, and we've been sharing pictures. And <laughs> recently we found out that she has twins, uh, grandchildren, and I have um, four, but she's got twins with the exact same names as one of mine. Wow. She has twin grandchildren that are, I believe, Violet and Sienna. Yeah, Violet and Sienna, and I have four grandchildren, and two of them, one is Sienna and one is Violet. So go figure. Yeah, it's a small world, but I, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I know I've been kind of under the radar or incognito, and I do want to thank, you know, you, and I, I want to thank my friends that I've made from the Waltons Forum online, and I think it's Waltons Remembered on Facebook. Um you know, Ned and Linda and Terry. And then there's Mary, who's from, uh, it's uh, the Walton's um, TV show one on Instagram. And they've been working me over for a couple of years now. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm like, do, and like my husband today said, you, 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 you're going to do great. And, you know, and I said, but I don't know if I deserve to do this. So. Oh, of course you it, do. I mean, it's a struggle. <laughs> I have, um, I mean, I have, as as I've been moving beyond our immediately immediate family cast, it's just been so fun to to reconnect with people, even that did like a single episode. And, and yeah. as as we exchanged in our emails, we actually had at least a scene together, yeah. which yeah. Was, which was and nice. Was so cool because. Um, a lot of my friends that remembered me in high school doing that, you know, I had the nerve. I'm not on Facebook very much, but I kind of put up, this is going to happen. And I was just so surprised because I, I struggled through high school um, with my grades and with what I was doing. And everyone was just so kind and, and wishing me, wishing me well. And I've really enjoyed watching, you know, I loved watching Martha Nix, um, mm. It really meant a lot to me. Her faith meant a lot to me and just her experience. We've been through, everybody's been through something on some level in the last several years with, you know, the pandemic and everything. And um, that's when we got hit pretty hard with a lot of grief and things. And her interview really just meant a lot to me. Um, I was in a similar place at one point and uh, it wasn't long ago, a couple of years ago. And um I'm just so thankful to be alive. And I feel like this is the time to reflect on my journey. And that's what a lot of my friends said is you're going to have so much fun remembering. So it's just really, really nice to be here. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm happy to hear that. We do have quite an amazing and loyal fan base and they have been very, uh, very kind to me and very, uh, encouraging and their memories and you know sometimes it's like it's a lot to take in but I've been very moved by their stories and what the show meant to them so uh, it's it's been quite a journey doing doing this uh, channel yeah it's a blessing for you and it's funny because I look at that in in a, a larger format of how much you're blessed and just for me I want to actually thank my daughter she found the Walton's forum online um, her name's Bryn and uh, she's a math teacher and I wouldn't have thought she would have done this um, it was kind of out of character but she's so sweet and she said hi I'm Patsy Brimmer's 
daughter. <laughs> and that and that was in, at the end of 2019. And and then she said, I need you to know I've done this, you know. And I was like, oh, oh, but you know, they're not no one's gonna remember me. And and it took me a few months. And then I signed on and it was just a huge warm hug. And I kind of have hopped on and off and recently have committed to being there more often because I like you, I just feel like the whole purpose for me has been meeting people, fellowship. And Mm -hmm. over and over and over again, um, when I first hopped on and when I was on the online uh, Walton's Remembered, so many people consistently, and I know you can confirm this, said how much the Waltons has meant to them in not just times of great joy, but in their grieving times, you know, it was something to cling to. And I was going through so much grief, you know, it was perfect timing um, when I was plugged in and it was the same thing for me. So um, yeah, we need these shows and I'm super happy that it stayed alive. And I'm really blessed and grateful that I got to be part of something so iconic, you know, and I mentioned in my, my correspondence with you, my little brother, was doing little house, you know, and I, mm-hmm. Martha and other uh, people that you've had on, there was this crisscrossing, you know, that went on and we didn't crisscross, but we worked simultaneously at the same time. And I, I remember getting to, when I was 18, I got to go set sit for him. Oh wow! And that was really cool because um, Allison who played Nellie, her and I really struck up a great, like, one week friendship (laughs) because I didn't, I don't even think we remembered where each other lived, but my brother recently reminded me, he said, remember all you did was talk and talk and talk and talk and talk on set, you know, and, and she's so cool. And I found out she's, she's been doing this too. So um, yeah, I've been trying to encourage him to come out of his shell and talk about a little bit. So it is such a blessing. It has been very, very uh, fulfilling to have extra friends in my life that we pray, we pray for each other, you know, and um, walk through each other's life stories. And that has just been incredible to me. So timing is everything. Yeah. So So you did uh, basically four episodes, you know, the, the wedding being a two parter. So, um, and then, and then Patsy was played by Eileen McDonough for a couple episodes or something like that, or one episode or something. So what happened there? Well, that is a really, that is a, not a complicated story. Um, my, my parents, who I just adored, we we're immigrants, came here when I was three. Um, and I've written stories on my, on my site that I'm writing on about our life. Um, we had a very important family reunion in England. Um, And my mom, who she wasn't a stage mom in any way, she was just such a kind and supportive mom. And I don't think she understood, you know, even the school system here and all that. So I did a a lot of interviews and a lot of stuff. And um, she just thought, you know, we're on hiatus and we can plan this reunion, which was working out with everybody else in England. My mom and dad booked these tickets. And then the great motorcycle race. And I was always a pretty good kid, so it was hard on me. Um, but I, I knew how important this trip was, and my parents felt so bad. But, you know, back then it was like all these people, we were the only family to come here. And my Nana followed us out about six months later on a boat, by boat, you know, with trunks and everything. And that was it. That was it. So this was really a big deal. And then, you know, we went and I found out, oh, my gosh, you know, they hired someone else. And Richard Thomas was directing it. And I'm like, no, no, (laughs) you know, and I was, um, I think it was 1976. I was 15 and there we were in England and it, and it was on my mind a lot, you know, but I loved meeting my cousins, um, my aunts, my uncles, you know, right now, so many of them are, are, are leaving us. And um, it was really, really important. And I give my mom a really, really hard time because we were right near Buckingham Palace. And I saw these signs for a free concert for Queen 
in Hyde mm-hmm. Park. Wow. And in my feeble mind, I thought, hey, I'm I'm going to go. This is going to make up. <laughs> this is going <laughs> to make up for why I'm not doing the Waltons and how I'm going to lose, you know, lose this role. Um, so I'm for sure we're, we're going to do that. And my parents were like, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, you're 15 and we're heading back to Essex um, by train. And uh, yeah, that you're not going to be doing that. We're not going to be doing that. You know, your little brother is six years younger and yeah, we're, we're here in England with our family and, and it was really cool. And then crazy enough. And people have asked me, you know, they've said, you all, you both, Eileen and I were different looking, mm-hmm. you know, and um, back then, you know, ha- today we're just fed everything so fast, right? We were watching a Netflix uh, docuseries uh, the other night and we binged it, right? We, ju- we, we just binge it. But back then people waited mm-hmm. to see the show. And I was talking with one of the fan friends who said, you know, they just figured back then, and you can tell me this, people aren't going to really notice, you know, because, <laughs> because we had to be patient for these shows to come out. And then suddenly I got hired back um, for Spring Fever, which was a really big uh, role. And um, that's where a lot of my really clear, you know, because I'm old now, we're, <laughs> you know, that's, that's where my really clear memories um, come in. And, oh, man, I was just so grateful. And I kept thinking, but isn't, isn't everyone going to notice, you know? And funny enough, when I first went on the forum and then this Facebook one, um, I know Eileen passed away. And so um, some people were just like, wow, you know, you're alive. So there, there was a little bit of uh, confusion in that. And it actually really broke my heart to hear that she passed away and and rather young um i lost my best friend to cancer very young um and i don't know how eileen passed away but i thought oh gosh you know and in my audition world um and in my brothers we have crisscrossed with so many young actors that have uh, passed away i don't know why they hired me back but i was really grateful you know i felt kind of bad for eileen and we never connected it just was what it was back then. So, yeah. 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 Well, they, they do that sort of thing on soap operas if, because yeah. obviously those characters are there all the time. And if somebody has a totally needs to step out of the role for illness or whatever, for a period of time, but they yep. will make the announcement at the beginning of the show. I remember that you know, yeah. and so we'll be playing the role of, but you're absolutely right about them thinking it was a different it was a different era um yeah and because we weren't able to i've talked about this a lot uh you couldn't record them until later seasons and people didn't have access to them to watch over and over and over again and we did not have what for viewers what's called a show bible where all of the information about the show and they project it out five seasons and you have background on all the characters. So we didn't have any of that. So we're constantly dealing with timelines that don't make sense and inconsistencies and the narration at the end of an episode says, Oh, and we were never to see the literary man again. And then the next season he's back as a different actor. And we had any number of characters that, reappeared as a different actor for one reason or another the actor yeah. wasn't available or they couldn't come to a contractual agreement and i think that was part of that era of television yeah. and audiences were used to that happening to a degree and they didn't always yeah. understand why um so it's it is odd but that they would also sometimes think that the audience wouldn't notice <laughs> I know. And, and just that that was a slight bit confusing. I'm super happy to be able to be here, you know, and grateful that, um, you know, I was able to come back and do, and do that. But getting back to that, you're right. You know, today we're just fed and fed and fed and fed so fast that I look back and I think, w- wasn't there a time where if you saw a boom mic, you know, you could write, you could write and say, I saw a boom mic, you know, in the, in the scene. Right. And then 
that was like reporting on something that, you know, the audience saw, you know, some kind of fault. But right now, I mean, our eyes are just on way too much and uh, we can binge, you know, anything in a night. And um, back then, I always talk about patience, especially in photography, you know, film photography, all these things that it's different now. You know, it, it's just so instant. It, there was so much more um, patience with editing and all the things that I was fascinated with on set. Probably drove a few people crazy, but that's truly where I found my um, kind of my niche. My dad was the photographer, so I that I was used to that in my life. And he brought the eight millimeters over from England and videoed everything. And um, but sitting on that set was just like wow, am I really meant to be in front of this camera? Because I love everything going on behind the scenes. Mm. There's a beauty. There's a real beauty to that era. And I feel mm. really, really grateful that I was part of, yeah. of that, that. So, yeah. yeah. So what, what are some of the memories that as you have been coming back into this world, what, what, are, you, what are you remembering about being on the set or filming or the cast or any of that? Well, um, I was mostly around David and Eric during spring fever. And I would, you know, just label David as just the kindest. I just thought he was so kind to be around. And Eric was hilarious. I'm sure he's still hilarious. He is. Um, <laughs> I think one, one, of, one of your interviews, you know, he had a thing about so many takes. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, that definitely happened. And I just, I just giggled. I just thought that was pretty funny, but I figured we might get in trouble. Um, and yeah, he just, that, I remember that. I remember, um, gosh, you know, um, I've written about this, this only this one thing, but my Nana, you know, I, the longest story I wrote was really the story of my Nana and my mom's life living through my Nana, two world wars and coming here and landing on set during spring fever, my fondest memories, the ones that really could bring tears to my eyes are watching her with Will Gear, who was the kindest man in the whole world. And I was overwhelmed, you know, by, by just all the Ralph and um, Michael, uh, we all did a hayride together, I believe at the end of that, um, that was a lot of fun. But watching my Nana talk to Will on breaks from when he was filming, mm -hmm. Um, with the, 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 um, is it, was it Ma Mamie, um, Miss Emily, that, Miss Mamie, uh -huh. Miss Mamie and Miss Emily and, and my Nana would watch those scenes, you know, and, um, they would talk about their garden. And I mean, I 17 years old thinking this is worth everything. This is so special. You know, my, my Nana that lived through two world wars is standing here talking to this beautiful man on this long running show about gardening. And it was super special. Mm. And I, I remember distinctly um, hair and makeup. That was super exciting. Um, Edie and all my crazy hair, so much hair. I, I couldn't warn it. I could not warn anybody enough. And I probably kept my mouth shut that um, I have this really, uh, it, this took a long time to straighten. Mm. I don't do well in, in foggy weather. I just go <laughs> frizzy and curly and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. And back then it was pretty long. And so, you know, they had to put all these big curls in it and it just went from long to just boy, 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 boy. And stuff. <laughs> that was weird. That was weird. It was like, wow, I don't even wear my hair like that. It was just huge <laughs> hair. Uh, and it was like, there's a lot of elasticity in there. You know, I learned later on that I had I, I did a stint with uh, Golden West Airlines and they, it was weird. They tested our hair and my hair was the one that just stretched and stretched and stretched. And they said, yeah, you could be the circus person that hangs from your hair. And I'm like, oh, that's why that one perm I got lasted forever, you know, <laughs> after I quit the show. But I loved, I love sitting in that chair. Um, I loved the drivers. I love the drivers. They were awesome. And I, can still see myself today going to wardrobe. Um, I'm still a, somewhat of a vintage girl. And oh, just, you know, seeing the, the textiles and the, the 1930s, the 1940s, you know, and I remember my mom 
talking away to, I don't remember who was in charge, but you know, I was going to be measured, measured up and all that. And I just remember running my hands along all the materials and mm. looking at, you know, looking at the um, wardrobe and the different, the different vintage outfits and, Oh man, I love that so much. And then I remember having my um, my makeup done, and the the guy, the gentleman that was doing it, said, um, "You have a face just like uh, Susan Richardson." Mm. And ironically enough, one of my big auditions with Down to Two, and I don't know if it was that way with her, but they typically chose the eighteen and over. I think you talked about that recently. I ran into that a ton. Down to Two screen tests. But you know, if you're 18 and look younger, you don't have to go to set school. And um, I remember him saying that. And I thought I said to him, well, it was down to her and I for that role on eight is enough. Mm. And I don't know why that just stood out. I think I drove one of the cameramen crazy because I wanted to look through and see how things were made. I loved filming the movie, um, the movie theater scene in Spring Fever. Uh, Eric and I sat together and this is hilarious because when you watch the show, we're all in the movie theater, mm -hmm. you know, Jim Bob and Eric's girlfriend are on one side. We're on another side. Um, but we were in a broom closet that day. Did you ever film in a broom closet? We were like in a broom closet. It was, wow. it was so, it really, really made me, it probably really stuck with me my whole life in terms of, um, be creative with what you have in my work. Eventually be creative with what you have. And my dad was that way. Well, we sat there and it was kind of like, maybe there was four or five movie chairs. And I just remember this giant fan, like a big fan. And, um, it wasn't on, it had, it had the blades and they were, there was a person with a big light that was sticking it into the back of the fan and then a person working the kind of shutter of the fan, which made it look like we were watching a movie wow. and eating popcorn and watching a movie. So you see that light flickering in your eyes, you know, here I'm 17 and I think, wow, that's, that is really cool. How is that going to look? And then you see, I watched the show again recently. You see the scene and we're all in the movie theater and you have that flickering light of the movie we're watching. And um, that was just something I, I think I took with me for a long time because when I started my career late in life with photography, um, you know, it was like work with what you have and be creative. And I always remember things from being on set. So but, we're all four of you in the broom closet at the same time or did they shoot they shot you guys watching right. and then they shot them and they just yeah. spliced it together yes it looked wow. like a movie theater but it was very weird because we were just in a very small environment you know and i remember <laughs> i remember two guys you know crunching down and the big light through the fan and then the doot 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 you know it was like wow. go, like like this you know and kind of flirting with each other and to me, I thought that's, I look forward to seeing how that turned out. Yeah. Did they tell you what you were going to be watching, the style of what you were supposed to be reacting to? No, they just said, you're watching a movie. You're watching it's more a about the two I relationships. Yeah. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe Eric um, might remember, but he did so many, he did so much that I don't know, you know, sometimes you're on just go mode, but I don't think. I don't recall, we were probably given, you know, I, I believe it was like we needed to have big eyes, like we were staring at something, mm. maybe a scary movie or something. I don't know, but I just, I love that. I, think I it love was a love story because um, I, I recently watched the episode again and yeah. it, it was, I think. Um, so it was awkward. Yeah, it was what was interesting was that it was a um, movie, I think, let me see if I have notes here, because I was going to be covering this soon. And I looked up what it was. So um, because outside the um, 
outside the movie theater, there was like the movie poster. Right. It was for a movie called Naughty Marietta. Yes. Okay. I remember. Okay. I did. And that was released in 1935. And this was supposed to be later. So I thought how interesting because were they implying that this movie that had been around already for several years was finally making it to your local theater or did they just, this is what they could get and use. And they figured again, nobody would notice that the time of the movie wasn't accurate. All the, all the little details and the vintage. Yeah. I should have looked into that. Um, and you're right because the whole show was based around trying to make the boys trying to make each other jealous. Yeah. And um obviously going to a romantic movie i do remember it was like we had to be you know watching it with our eyes kind of big but i think eric you know he was just sort of yeah getting closer <laughs> trying to <laughs> yeah in the broom closet <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i i um love the hayride at the end you know and um the whole story that really contrasted I think about that today while we're older, you know, and we're thinking, um, gosh, you know, God's not done with me. I I live to create, you know, and I create to live. That's what I decided Mm -hmm. is motto in life. And there was, you know, uh, Mamie and um, Emily yeah, worried, you know, just worried that this dying rose was a a sign that that they were soon going to go. And then there was this young love and, um, and it was really well written, uh, really well contrasted. And it is how we feel as we age. You know, we think, am I, am I through? You know, are these signs? And um, it was really me. And then at the end with the hayride singing, and I have no singing voice. I could um, clear an entire room if I tried to sing. They'd run for their life, but it was that, you know, by the light of the silvery moon. And we must have filmed it and sung it a lot. <laughs> it's funny because I was not, I was so disappointed I didn't get to do that. I was watching the episode yeah. and there's a point where they're all going to go and Mary Ellen says, oh, John Curtis has a bit of a sniffle, so I'm going to stay home. And then I'm watching this whole end sequence going, I didn't get to go on the hayride no. and participate yeah. in all that. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah. And that- when I, I met Michael, um, I don't I don't recall really meeting Ralph. I watched him film, you know, from a distance. Um, he kept the set quite quiet. Um, I don't know if you recall that, but when he had some scenes, he was he kept things very quiet. You know, we had a lot of respect um, for Ralph when I was was on set, and I, I might have met him, but you know, I I think I was just very overwhelmed to be on such an iconic show the hayride was was hilarious um we did go around and around and around and around and we that did sing that song yeah <laughs> and I realized I have a terrible singing voice like do I have to sing <laughs> you know but um and then we're all back together you know the boys mm-hmm. had switched back so um that was really neat yeah uh, I have I have wonderful memories. I believe I really loved that every single commissary has in anywhere, um, probably college, although I didn't go after high school. Um, yogurt, the yogurt. Remember the soft yogurt? The soft oh, yogurt. Soft machine? serve. Yeah, right. yeah. Really- I, I feel like that's where they found David sometimes, you know, it was like <laughs> he's in commissary reading or reading outside of there because um, he, he had talked about I watched his and he's such a kind um, man. And he was always so kind, you know, on set, but he did express on the interview, you know, that it was a lot of waiting around, you know, and it was a show that, that you were on permanently, you know, for a long time. And so there was time to kill with all of these other people coming in and, you know, obviously filming different scenes. But I remember they called him a few times, like, where's, where's David? And he would usually be reading, you know, like outside the commissary and, um, I discovered the yogurt over there and uh, the soft serve yogurt. That was really good. You know, it was just, it was just fun and um, a real blessing. I mean, I was raised in a house where when we first started auditioning and doing all this stuff, you know, my dad being British and dry sense of humor 
made this comment and he said, the doors will not be widened in this house. <laughs> that meant your head was not going to grow big. And uh, I took that to heart because I, I understood, you know, we were raised with a lot of manners and respect. So great to have Debbie with me. And um, I will be back with more of my conversation with Debbie um, in another segment. In the meantime, thanks for watching.